This video supported in part by... It's just a VR YouTube channel. Arcade 1UP continues to crank out their line of three-quarter scale arcade cabinets, and that appears to be their bread and butter. But I was happy to see that they haven't stopped innovating and experimenting on just what form factor of hardware they can release to house our favorite classic arcade games. I was particularly interested in this new tabletop pong countercade with a cocktail layout and two full-size spinners. So after swearing off Arcade 1UP for nearly two years, I pulled the trigger on a pre-order. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you for checking out this video. You know, this should be of particular interest to Generation Xers. All of the titles included on this unit were released to the world between 72 and 81 around the same time that a lot of us were introduced to the world. In my previous video about this Pong countercade, I solicited you, our viewers, to tell us what questions you wanted to make sure I addressed and answered in this review video. So throughout the video, keep an eye up there in the corner. You'll see a little comment icon pop up periodically. That'll tell you whose question and what their question was I am currently addressing. Okay, I wanna play some Pong. I'm guessing you wanna play some Pong because you clicked on this video. Let's get after it. Don't you know that you're a grown up? And here he is, our Arcade 1UP Pong Countercade. I'm not going to waste too much time exploring the box, but we should take a quick look at just what it has to offer. On the front, you can see most of the unit behind a slightly cloudy, clear plastic, somewhat muting the vibrant colors that are a part of Pong. Across the bottom, you see it touts the six games. You got Pong, Pong Doubles, Pong Sports, Warlord, Super Breakout, and Tempest. The artwork on the back, though, really gives us a better idea of what is in store. Look at the vibrant colors. Those yellows and oranges really pop. You can see that contour along the bottom of the device and all those buttons and controls along the side. Yeah, okay, a box is a box. Let's get this guy open and see just what we have. This is something I've noticed on other Arcade 1UP units. When I take the clear plastic off this acrylic, there's a bit of a plastic shrapnel left around the screws. If you want that gone, you're pretty much gonna have to unscrew the screws to remove that. In addition to Pong, we have that little power brick and some instructions. Mm -hmm. And now let's give the hardware a quick tour. So down on this side, you can see we have a player one, player two start buttons, power on off and a volume slider, as well as a headphone jack. No controls at all on the opposite side, but very colorful with that same Pong theme, the wood grain and that nice arch to the bottom. Controls on the player one side include an A and a B button, plus that spinner. Same thing on the player two side, except the buttons are black rather than orange. Taken as a whole, I really like the overall aesthetic and design of this from the arch along the sides and of course the cutouts for the controls. I'm very fond of that. And the color scheme, wherever you don't have that bright orange and yellow from Pong, you have that nice wood grain that absolutely screams 70s and early 80s. And of course, the giant Pong emblazoned across the top. There's no question what they're highlighting here is Pong, but it comes with many more games. So it's now gonna come down to the gameplay. So at this point, it's time to fire it up and see how it does play. All right, Arcade 1UP. I want to comment on the monitor here as it's powering up. We had several questions asking about the monitor size and quality. This is an eight inch LCD monitor and viewing angles are they are perfectly acceptable from either end for either player. Uh, though colors are not incredibly vibrant and the blacks aren't incredibly deep. I mean, it's okay though, it's quite reflective. So playing outdoors in direct sunlight would make it pretty hard to see. But as long as you don't have like bright overhead lights, it's gonna be fine. I actually would have liked to see less bezel and more screen, honestly, but it's not disproportionately small and it's perfectly viewable. You may have noticed during the boot up sequence that emulation was handled by Code Mystics. That was a question that Rick H had. So there's your answer, it certainly is. The menu here highlights the six available titles. So why don't we get started with the first one chronologically and that's 1972's Pong. You can launch your selected game with A, but if you tap B, it goes into the settings menu where you can adjust various things based on what's available. One that's very welcomed in every title is sensitivity of the spinner, which is great. I leave them all on default, except for only one that I'll get to later. 
So getting into Pong itself, I mean, <laughs> it's Pong. It's absolutely Pong. There are no extra bells and whistles here. There's nothing added to make it fancy schmancy. It's exactly what you remember from the original Pong, and that's what it should be. Other games on this device take liberties and variations of Pong, but the original Pong is exactly what I remember. Viewers Kunmong and Marcus had asked, what's it like playing Pong from the end instead of on the side, which is how you normally would have played Pong in the stand-up cabinet. And really, it feels no different. It's like two-player breakout, really. When you play breakout, you're at the bottom of the screen controlling your paddle, and it feels much the same way. I didn't have any trouble adapting. And of course, Pong was manufactured in cocktail cabinets as well, so this is not the first time we've seen Pong playing end-on-end -end instead of side-to-side. -to, -side. to my eye, this is a very faithful recreation of the original Pong, and I'm glad to finally own it in a device that has a nice spinner so I can play it properly. Let's move on to the next title, that's Pong Doubles. And the inclusion of Pong Doubles in this thing doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So Pong Doubles was a four player team Pong where you had two players on either side working together like doubles tennis. But you can't do that here, so, you know, but what's the point? It's only a two player game, there's no single player option. And other than each player having two paddles that are both controlled with the same spinner, there's not that much variation between this and Pong. The experience it offers is so similar to Pong that, okay, I mean, thanks, you included it, it's an arcade version, but you're probably gonna play the original Pong or try one of the more interesting variants. This one is just too middle of the road. Let's move along to Pong Sports from 1977. Now, this was an interesting inclusion because Pong Sports is an Atari 2600 cartridge, not an arcade game at all, but of course it relied heavily on the spinner control, those paddle controls that you had on your 2600. And the way they've implemented it here is absolutely awesome. You might remember that Pong Sports had 50 different variations of seven or eight different kinds of games, whether they're table hockey or foosball or soccer or whatever. Rather than having a game selection, Right on the screen, they give you a representation of that chart that you would have found in the manual of your cartridge. Here's an example from Combat. Remember how they have this chart showing you which game would give you which options? Well, that's exactly what you have here. You can just turn the dial, find what option you want, and when you push start, the screen goes full, and that's the game that you play. Oh man, I wish every classic Atari 2600 game could be emulated like this somewhere. I would love to see Arcade 1UP do more with Atari 2600 titles using this this exact same menu. I played through all the variations, both single player and multiplayer. And since the 2600 screen is actually on its side, for games where that would be confusing, they have an option in the menu that duplicates the screen for each player without having to look at the screen upside down or sideways. You can turn that off if you want, but leaving it on works great for us playing multiplayer. So all in all, Pong Sports has implemented great here, and it's one of my favorite titles on the Pong Countercade. Moving on then to Super Breakout from 1973. MC Murr in particular asked, how is Super Breakout? And that's what we're gonna find out. This is the arcade version of Super Breakout. Just like Breakout, except you have three flavors available. Uh, some of them have multi-ball, in fact. What you do here is before you serve, you tap that B button, it'll cycle through the different variations. And once you hit serve, you're committed to that variation of Super Breakout for the duration of your play. You know, Nicholas asked about the speed and sounds compared to the arcade versions, and I can detect no slowdown or glitches to my eye. Unlike that first wave partycade, you probably remember, the hardware here seems entirely up to the task. One great and obvious feature of how Super Breakout is implemented here is that it's configured like a cocktail table would be. So it's oriented for player one right side up, but as soon as player one loses a ball, it flips so that it's right side up for player two. But that's because unlike Pong, Super Breakout is not a simultaneous multiplayer. You take turns playing until you lose a ball. All right, let's move along to Warlords from 1980. Tanya L asked, how did Warlords play, both single and multiplayer? So it's time to find out. This is the arcade version of Warlords, and I'm gonna tell you now, this is probably my favorite game on the Pong Countercade. Now, it doesn't have the overlay that you would have seen in the original arcade game, and that's a little bit of a miss, but the game is still absolutely cool and plays just like you would want it to. I kept going back to this one again and again, and it's the one that I was playing multiplayer the most as well. I also had several viewers, including Doug and Wesley and several others ask, hey, how cramped is it? How comfortable is it to play with two adults multiplayer? And as you can see here with Warlords, which is two players playing simultaneously and kind of frenetically, 
It's absolutely comfortable. I had no problem with this. During recording the multiplayer segment, we're playing on a table that's a typical card table size, and it was totally comfortable. You could see the screen, you could reach across easily, your hands aren't cramped. So that multiplayer experience with two adults, even with me and my big monster hands, absolutely went just fine. Once your game is over in Warlords, if you're lucky enough to get a high score, be sure you put in your initials because the high scores absolutely save for Warlords. Finally, let's move along to Tempest. This is from 1981. This is the arcade ROM. And Tempest is the only title that I found I changed the defaults. I actually turned up the sensitivity for the spinner to maximum, and I felt that gave me the most comparable experience to a real arcade cabinet spinner. It's funny to me now because Tempest was the game I was most looking forward to in this cabinet. It actually feels a bit out of place in this collection. That doesn't mean it's bad or wrong, and I'm glad it's here, but with all the other Pong and Pong Sports and even Warlords, yeah, it was an obvious inclusion because it used a spinner, but it just doesn't quite fit in with that same aesthetic. So I feel like it's five games and Tempest. It's not six cohesive games. That's just my impression. That's no ding against Tempest or the game selection. Both Krillin64 and Joshua asked, how is the vector rendering handled in Tempest? And I will say it's clean. In fact, it's too clean. I wish that in the settings there had been the ability to adjust things like beam width and flicker to make it feel more like crunchy. That would have really been appreciated. I mean, take a look at this footage I did from playing Tempest inside of MAME where you can adjust all those things. And when it's more imperfect and the vector beam is a little more gritty and a little less exact. So if you were hoping for or expecting those adjustments that I was kind of hoping for, you might be a little disappointed here. And since Tempest is a game that really works those controls, this seems like a perfect time to focus on the controls, specifically that spinner. I must have had a dozen viewers ask about what about that spinner? How does it work? How does it feel? That kind of thing. So yeah, let's take a deeper look. So it's quite tall, which is nice. It has ridged edges, so it's easy to turn on the edge or by grabbing it like a knob, like uh, you would typically kind of do. Uh, and it is weighted. Uh, it's kind of hard to see how far it spins. So what I'm going to do is put a Wreck-It Ralph sticker right there so you can see how far it spins freely. Personally, I could stand for it to have a little more weight and inertia, but that's just like saying a good meal could use a little more salt. It still tastes great. This still performs well. There was also some concern that this might be quite cramped or in the way, but the cutout really handles that. Not only is the spinner pretty tall, but there's plenty of room and I have pretty big hands to fit in there, or you can even rest your hand on the edge to spin with your fingertips. And as for the buttons, they are your typical arcade one-up buttons. They're not particularly clicky, they are concave buttons, but they feel fine and responsive, and I, again, had no trouble with any execution of commands. In all honesty, I don't have a lot of big negatives for this Countercade review. Only things that are good, but could have been much better to really put it over the top. Starting with those spinners we just talked about, they're great, but a little more weight behind them, a little more inertia, they could have been even better. The screen, it's good but if it was a little bigger and a little higher contrast, it could definitely have been better. Individual settings on each game are great, but vector settings in Tempest, that would have again set this even higher and put it even further over the top. And the positives really outweigh the negatives here. You have that quality construction, well-built, heavy unit that sets firmly on a table. You have that striking Pong art design, both the wood grain and the bright orange and yellows. Wow, it just grabs the eye. You have those responsive controls that while I just said they could have been better, frankly, they are the best spinners that I have played with released on a mass market consumer device like this. And then you have that surprisingly cool Pong Sports implementation that made me long for more Atari emulation from Arcade 1UP. And all of that bundled up in a package that's just the right size for some simultaneous two-player action, whether it be Pong or Warlords or any of the titles featured here on this unit. All of these things taken into consideration and distilled down, I am ready to award this Pong Countercade from Arcade 1UP four and a quarter tokens out of five. I know it's pretty pricey for a lot of people and that price may put it out of your reach, but if you're a fan of Pong or Warlords or really Tempest or any of the games included on this unit, the package you're gonna get for the money that you spend will definitely make you feel like you have money well spent and invested in a quality toy that you're going to enjoy for a good long while. Hey, I sure hope you found something to enjoy in this video and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, you made it to the end. If you liked this video, the best way to say thanks is to watch one more. 
here are a couple suggestions that you just might enjoy. And if you love our content, maybe consider becoming a Patreon supporter by following the link on screen. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries.